Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, good morning everybody. This is Professor Bikas Medi. Today, we are going to discuss about antiplatelet drugs. Now, you must be knowing that people who stays in the north or in the south also, like there is a lot of incidence of dengue fever. So, whenever we have the high rise temperature, you do never know that it could be because of dengue. So, we usually advise that only take paracetamol, do not take any analgesic because some of the analgesic also has antiplatelet action. So, therapeutically we use many of the drugs, antiplatelet drugs for management of various conditions. Now, what are the drug? It act as antiplatelet because platelet drugs that interfere with platelet functions, we usually use for prophylaxis of thromboembolic disorders. Now, principal function of platelet that it prevent bleeding, whenever there is a bleeding platelet get activated and once it is activated ultimately it form the thrombus and that is how it prevent the bleeding. So, we use the drug for blood thinners for prophylactic purpose in case of thromboembolic phenomena. Now, if you look at the platelet does not have a nucleus and this platelet it express some of the glycoprotein and integrin receptors and that is the reason you can see some of this drug acting on glycoprotein. Now, this platelet activations once it is activated there is a collagen reaction like glycoprotein 1 A or glycoprotein 2 B receptor via V W F factors. Now, it also release some of this factor it is release that thromboxin A 2 or ADP or 5 hydroxy tryptamine it regulate or it mediate the platelet activation. So, if you look at the conformational changes of glycoprotein 3 and 2 B and 3 A, it is actually that binding to fibrogen cross linkages and there is a platelet plaque formation take, take place. So, you can think that some of the drug is acting through different mechanism based on this information. So, if you look at the thrombus in arteries, like only mass in the arteries or thrombus in the veins. So, this antiplatelet drugs are very, very useful. And at the same time, you have to also remember that there should be balance between postacycline to or thromboxin A 2 in order to control the intravascular thrombus. So, there must be the balance should be the maintained for that. Now, once you classify like what are the antiplatelet drug? So, antiplatelet drug you can think that most oldest more than 100 years we use antiplatelet drug is aspirin or acetylsalicylic acid this is one of the oldest drug. Now, recently you have been using the drug like dipyridomol or some of the drug has been developed based on that it act as a receptor blocker or P 2 Y 12 receptor blocker like most commonly used drug like copitrogrel, parasugrel, tigagrelor or kengrelor. But we have also the drug as we discuss about the receptor expression in platelet like GP 2 B and 3 A antagonist like we have epsixumab we have epifibate or tyrofibin. So, there are so many drug, but most commonly used we use is aspirin because it is cheaper equally efficacious, but other than that also we have copidrogrel because there is a aspirin resistant cases also there where we have to use the newer drug for that, but we have epsiximab and other drug is also there which is acting through GP 2 B and 3 A receptors. 
Now looking at the aspirin, acetylsalicylic acid, it basically acetylates COX-1 enzyme or thromboxane synthesis. So, it is has a irreversible action because platelet do not have a nucleus. So, it causes irreversible inactivation in case of portal circulation where it causes deacetylation of aspirin or in the liver. So, in case of thromboxane A2 formation, basically when you look at the pharmacological action of aspirin, in case of the lower dose as low as like 50 milligram per kg, 50 milligram it acts as an antiplatelet till 1200 milligram. But ideally you put uh, around 300, 25 to 75 milligram because if you get a maximum efficacy as an antiplatelet with a lower dose, so you are not going to use the higher dose. So, in low dose of aspirin it acts as an antiplatelet. So, this drug is a typical that if you increase the dose it acts as an analgesic, if you go beyond analgesic effect it acts as an anti-inflammatory. So, in lower dose of aspirin acetylsalicylic acid, it acts as a antiplatelet action. And this action is like if you give aspirin like those patient we say you send it for surgery, we usually avoid aspirin because there is a chances of bleeding because this prolongation of bleeding is almost lasted for 5 to 7 days. So, at low dose if you start from 75 to 150 milligram, it selectively suppress thromboxane A2 and that is why it acts as an antiplatelet. But in case of a higher dose beyond 150, it also acts as thromboxane A2 or prostacycline 2. So, it is a dose dependent effect that in the lower dose it inhibit thromboxane A2, but if you increase the dose, lower dose means 75 to 150 milligram per day, but if you increase this, it also inhibit prostacycline. prostacycline. So, what are the conditions you use aspirin? most commonly you use for secondary prevention of any transient ischemic attack. If there is senses of you know thrombus formation like ischemic stroke or myocardial infarction, patient is hypertensive there is senses of myocardial infarction. So, usually we started secondary prophylaxis with aspirin, ischemic stroke and myocardial infarction. Now, this has been also used in prevention of ischemic stroke following angina pectoris. If the patient complained of chest pain and he has been diagnosed or she has been diagnosed as angina pectoris, then again you start with prophylaxis with aspirin. Now, coming to the second drug is dipyridamol. Now, if you see that this drug dipyridamol, it is a phosphodiesterase enzyme inhibitor. So, it increases the cyclic MP concentration. Now, what happen if you use this drug, it causes inhibition to uptake of adenosine to platelet that is how it act as an antiplatelet. However, it also potentiate prostacycline uh, and also interfere with the aggregation. So, this is also commonly used drug for secondary prophylaxis and this drug is 90 percent bound to plasma protein, very very high bounding plasma protein. It is metabolized in the liver. and this is mainly excreted in bile or maybe small amount in urine. So, the doses available of dipyridamol is 75 milligram and 100 milligram preparation in the market. Now, what are the conditions you use dipyridamol? This is basically used to enhance the action of warfarin or aspirin in thromboembolytic event it has a lower risk in a stroke of transient ischemic attack. So, it is basically used as an add-on therapy with warfarin and aspirin and it has a lower risk for stroke in transient ischemic attack. Now, coming to the new drugs and these are the drug is developed based on P2Y12 receptor antagonist. Now, what are the drugs? One of the commonest drug you use as I said that we talk about aspirin resistant, where you have to give a newer drug like copidogrel. Now, in this drug it is a newer and it is more potent when you compare with triclopidine. Basically, it is a irreversible inhibitor of P2Y12 receptors and 
copy drug roll is basically a product and it has a slow onset of action. So, once the drug is given, it is only absorbed 50 percent and only fraction that is activated that when it is metabolized through liver by cytochrome 2 C 19. It is a pro drug, more potent drug. Once it is given, it is metabolized by cytochrome 2 C 19 and it get activated. Now, condition it is used copidogrel is in case of combination with aspirin in coronary stent implantation. Nowadays, there are a lot of stent procedure is been done in the hospital. So, it is given in a combination with aspirin and this drug is FDA approved indication for reduced stroke and MI, myocardial infarction. So, along with coronary stent, it is also given as a secondary prophylaxis for stroke and myocardial infarction. Now, as you know that these are the drug which there is chances of always a bleeding. So, one has to be taken care of that there is risk of bleeding when you start the therapy. Now, another drug is Prasugrel. This is also the similar purinergic receptor blockers and basically it is a pro drug, but it has a faster action and as you see that earlier copy drug girl, it is only it is a also a pro drug, but 50 percent of the drug has been absorbed metabolized by cytochrome 2 C 19. This is has a complete absorption and it is completely activated when you compare with copy drug girl. And this is rapidly and completely absorbed from the gut and this drug is contraindicated those who have a history of cardiovascular disease means high risk of bleeding. So, you need not have to prescribe this drug because it is contraindicated in case of cardiovascular risk or bleeding is there in a patient. You have to also be careful in patient body weight is less than 60 kg and those patient who has compromised kidney function test. So, you need not have to select this drug in case of a lower body weight less than 60 kg or in a patients who have the history of renal impairment or you look at that kidney function test. Now, this drug is given a loading dose of 60 milligram once a day and you give the dose up to 10 milligram. Now, what are the condition you use this drug? One is comparison of copy drug girl like stem, non stem, it is better reduction in date in terms of when you keep the end point. Of course, it has adverse effect like most common adverse effect is bleeding or severe intracranial hemorrhage in tangent ischemic attack or stroke patient. So, one has to be careful. Another is purinergic is Ticagrelor. Basically, it is a reversible inhibitor of P2Y12 and it is metabolized by cytochrome 3 A4 in the liver. It has been approved by US FDA in case of cardiovascular death, MI and stroke and this is indicated in a patient undergoing percutaneous intervention. Now, when you look about adverse effect, similar adverse effect you can find in case of high risk intracranial bleeding. Then the copy drug girl and this is contraindicated in patient with a history of intracranial bleeding. You are not going to prescribe if there is a history of intracranial bleeding, you are not going to prescribe this drug. Another one is Ken Grelor. This is also given parenterally and it is reversible inhibitors of P2Y12, but it has a short half life. Basically, it inhibit ADP induced platelet aggregation within a minute, very, very fast acting within a minute attack and it is indicated for risk of you know in case of myocardial infarction or there is a repeat coronary revascularization stent thrombosis or patient undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention, this drug has been used. <laughs> now, what are the adverse effects of this drug? Generalized, you can remember that there is a risk of bleeding with this drug and this is greater with that when you compare with copy drug during coronary intervention. So, 
all the new drug there is chances of you know risks is the bleeding. So, you try to avoid in case of intracranial bleeding. Now, the newer group which is used is glycoprotein 2 B 3 A receptor antagonist. Now, among this glycoprotein 2 B and 3 A receptor these are adhesive receptor on platelet. Basically, it is in platelet surface for fibrogenin and by this factor PWF it also like you can think that some of the agonists like thrombin, thromboxin A2 or ADP collagen induced it enhance the platelet aggregation. So, if you give an antagonist in order to block the aggression induced by platelet agonist and that is how it is used in various thromboembolic phenomena. So, one of the commonest drug we use is abscissimab. Now, if you look at abscissimab, it is a chimeric monoclonal antibody agonist to glycoprotein 2 B 3 A receptors. Now, what it does? It bind to vitrogen receptors on platelet or in vascular endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells. Now, this drug is given in a dose of 0.25 milligram per kg bolus dose and followed by infusions of 0.125 milligram per kg per minute and it is given for 12 to 24 hours. Basically, this drug abscissimab is used for in case of patient with unstable angina or as a adjuvant to coronary thrombolysis or you go for percutaneous you know interventions with a stand application. But again there is a chances of bleeding that in case of history of any intracranial or in case of chances of bleeding it should be avoided because it can cause excessive bleeding. Now, among glycoprotein 2 B 3 A receptor antagonists we have FT betide. Basically, it is a synthetic drug. It is selective to platelet glycoprotein 2 B and 3 A receptors, but it has a very long plasma half life and most of the condition we use in unstable angina, angina or coronary angioplasty. It has similar adverse effect profile like other drug is bleeding thrombocytopenia, but one has to be careful about anaphylaxis. So, if you have a history of any allergy or then it should be avoided because of chances of anaphylaxis. Now, another drug is tyrofibin. Basically, it is a non peptide small molecule of GP2 B and 3 A receptor inhibitor, but it has a very short duration and this drug is used for management of non ST segment elimination in acute coronary syndrome. Similarly, when you look at adverse effect profile, it has a bleeding or thrombocytopenia. So, as an antiplatelet, you can think that you can if you go back and see the classification that there are various drug we use as antiplatelet drug. One is very very old start with aspirin, then we have dipyrabol, then we have pyrinergic receptor you know blockers like copitregrol or various new drug, but we have also GP2 B and 3 A receptor antagonist which is abscissimab. Some of this we as an add on therapy because in case of resistant cases like aspirin resistance or it is also been avoided because some of this they have you know chances of bleeding especially intracranial bleeding. So, you need to you avoid this drug. So, this is what the drug it is used in antiplatelet. So, if you have any questions or you want to discuss kindly go ahead. Thank you.